Good evening. Hello, good evening and welcome uh, to this week's edition of the Mac Mirror Inn. Uh, somewhere around there should be my co-landlord, Rich. Oh, there he is. <laughs> How you doing, Rich? Uh, I was muted then and, uh, and, and camera off, so uh, yeah, big entrance from me. Hello, everyone. And this week, our uh, our special VIP patron is Chris McGowan of Edinburgh Tailing Company. Good evening, Chris. Hi, guys. How you doing? All right. How you doing? Everybody good? Yeah, Very man. Well, it's in it. Cool, man. So, uh, so guys, um, this is another instalment of our Friday post post working week. Uh, Mac Mira in, stop around for a couple of drinks and discuss your week and how things are going and just chill out and relax, basically. So. Uh, yeah. So, how's your week been, Chris? Yeah, um, another busy week. Um, another couple of uh, long drives, you know, through obviously um, similar tier areas. So, you know, not bringing any rules. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, just trying to make sure that everybody's um, everybody's united with their garments, you know, and you, yours, yours come up soon, of course. We'll talk about that in a wee bit, my man. That's good. I, I like that. I like that though. <laughs> so, Rich, how's your week been, my man? Yeah, good. Uh, busy, productive. I think um, the the last sort of last week or two before Christmas comes in and and, and business to be done. Yeah. Yeah. So and pretty much, off. pretty much the same. Yeah, pretty much the same. Yeah. Just trying to uh, get around customers. Let let the regulars know that you know our, our cut off for ordering is going to be like middle of next week because the warehouse shuts down on the eighteenth. That type of thing. Um, and obviously preparing for you know the the culmination of the week really and, and that's a nice a nice drink at the mac mirror in at the end of the week you know <laughs> um hi frederick uh so you guys welcome um please pop your comments in say hello good evening uh all that sort of good stuff it's great to see the comments coming in so please keep that going uh, tonight we're going to be talking with chris uh, we're going to find out a little bit more about him what Edinburgh Taylor and Company is, a little bit about Chris McGowan Taylor and stuff like that as well. Chris might name drop a few people as we go through, as we're talking. <laughs> if he feels like it, if not, I might push him to do it or something like that. But no, so we're just gonna we're just gonna chat things whiskey. We're gonna chat things tailoring. Um, get a bit of an education from Chris on tailoring. You know, it's not all about just going to top man and getting your best stuff rich. Okay, just remember that. It's not all about that. There are affordable tailored options out there, my friend, and we'll find out about that as as we go on through. Uh, so, guys, don't forget firing any questions that you got out there. Um, next Friday will be our last Mac Mirror in uh, before 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 the fat man in the red suit comes, uh, especially tailored by Chris, probably. <laughs> Did, did you get the big man on the roster for this year, mate? Every year comes in August every year, mate. August every year, and you know his measurements never change. Never change. <laughs> That's a first name drop. Yeah. Exactly. I told you. I told you would do it. I told you would do it. And, but, guys, that's not it for the Christmas period. We have got um, a Christmas tasting on the 29th of December uh, where we get to try four very special drams indeed. There's the pack. Uh, that comes in at 29.95, And we're going to go through Motorhead. Uh, we've got our new uh, Vintergrid. And we've got a new Moment. And we've got a single cask expression in there as well, guys. It's not Vintergrid. A Apologies. Uh, so we've got Shish Bosh Look in there. And we, what else did we have in there? That was Yak Liquor, wasn't that? I think it's Vinterglod, um, is it not? It is, it is Vinterglod. Sorry, yeah. my bad. Yeah, yeah, so it's an umlaut tasting pack. Um, so the two wee dots above the O's, it's an umlaut tasting pack. Uh, hopefully I've said that properly. <laughs> um, but no. So, yeah, so that's on the 29th, guys. Okay, those packs are available now to buy on www.macmira.co.uk. But... <laughs> It's that familiar sound. It must be around about five past six. So uh, it's time for uh, for myself and Rich to get the round in. Uh, let us know what you're drinking, guys. Let us know what you want. Uh, so we'll start off with Chris. What have you What have you got in your glass this evening, sir? Um, I actually have beer. Oh, nice. A good pint. I like it. <laughs> I like it, yeah. Good old-fashioned pint. Um, <laughs> theoretically speaking, but, well, you know, actually, isn't it? It's, it's, you know, it's one of the fake <laughs> parties that you get for Father's Day. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, uh, Fantastic. I believe I'll explain. It, I've got a wee bit of driving to do later on, so I'm going to lay off ah, it. But if fair. I was, sensible, I, have, sensible. I have a very nice um, Brookladdich microbrewery um, 
the addition up in my shelf there that I would nice. have in the glass if, if that's what. So. Nice. So, he des so Chris is the designated driver this evening. So he gets a he gets a free coke off the barman. Not a problem. Happy days. Yes. Uh, so what, what, what have you got, Rich? I was just thinking, Chris, you could take that um, that glass with you to to pubs that you go to, just so you can feel like you're drinking a bit. <laughs> yeah. isn't it? Oh, yeah. of it. Absolutely. You just put water in it. It looks authentic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've I've gone for the um, the herdited. Yeah. Um, oh, the herdited harvest her time. Heard the tea, heard the tea. And I was just thinking, we both said Vinterglod, very, um, very un Swedish. We did, didn't we? Even there. though we've had a Swedish lesson in the last week and a half, you know? Yeah. So, so we'll, we'll consider Vinter ourselves towed off. Vinterglod. Vint Vinterglod. Um, Vinterglod. Which, which was Moa's, I think, favorite favorite one to say of all. One of them, yeah. 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 Um, yeah so, heard her, her the tid, or, or um, for the layman, for right. the layman, skurred the tid. But um, very much her, her did it. Nice. Um, yeah. our, that's our, our Amarone wine um, finish that we've done with um, uh, uh, Massey. Massey. Yeah, that's it. And this, this is, I think it's my favourite seasonal. And I think um, we got word this week that we've basically sold out. We, have, we, don't, ha we don't have any left. Yeah. yeah. We, yeah. we so don't have any of that left. So you can only buy it now from, from various retailers that might still have it in stock. But um, we're sort of celebrating its, its passing with us because, you know, this is. Um, this is one of the first ones that got me into McMira at the very beginning. So um, I thought, yeah, that's the one I saw on the shelf and picked. So any, any retailers out there that are watching, uh, guys, if you've got a bottle of Herd de Teed left on your shelf, let us know uh, because they are the last ones in the wild, basically. We don't have any more left at, at McMira. Um, mm -hmm. And this evening, I have done myself a nice cheeky wee cocktail. Uh, As always. A, a macatini. Uh, so a wee twist on a martini, uh, specifically a Vespa martini from um, from Casino Royale, James Bond. Uh, I've swapped out I've swapped out the vodka for for Mac though, uh, Mac by Mac Mira. So I've got three parts gin, one part Mac, and uh, one point two parts of um, Lillet Blanc. Uh, so it's, that's a, a, a sweet white wine vermouth, um, shaken, obviously not stirred, uh, and in a nice uh, in a nice champagne coupe. So, uh, chin chin, skull. Yeah, skull. So, I suppose the first question is, Chris, who are you? What are you about? Tell us who a little bit about you? yourself, my man. Yeah. Um, <laughs> none, of that, none of that thuggery in here. None of that thuggery. Okay. So, this is the bit that nobody thinks is to talk about themselves. Um, I am uh, Chris McGowan. Um, come from Shots in North Lanarkshire, and I am a bespoke tailor. Um, I've been doing this for 15 years now, um, and I've I've kind of been around. You know, I've I've worked for people, I've worked with people, and I I now uh, own two businesses. So, um, yeah, um, it's always been a bit of a mission of mine though to make bespoke uh, tailoring a bit more accessible to people. Um, you know, it's it's very easy to find a bespoke tailor in your city that's at the the high end of the the market. You know, and it's. Um, a little bit more difficult to find those more reasonably priced guys. So I'm I'm here to represent. You know, we're we're doing that, um, making sure that you know your your normal person can can have access to having something made. So that's our, our mission at Edinburgh Tailoring Company. Happy days. So so like since so you mentioned Edinburgh Tailoring Company, um, where are you? Don't just say Edinburgh. Uh, <laughs> Glasgow, mate. <laughs> Glasgow, <laughs> Edinburgh. Uh, yeah. Glasgow, and Manchester. Edinburgh? Nah, yeah, of course. Nah. Obviously, ne um, never heard of it. Never heard of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Obviously, the HQ is in Edinburgh. We're on Young Street in Edinburgh. Um, nice wee studio facing out onto a, a gorgeous little old fashioned cobbled road. Um, it is very much the uh, what you would imagine. Um, you know, w walking back in time, if you like. Uh, and then you come into your studio, and it's blam blue walls with a big yellow canary couch. Um, it's just totally different. So. Um, we we kind of like to encourage people to come in and, and feel inspired, so we're trying to sort of um, show a bit of design in the studio with that as well, where people can come in and choose bright colours and not 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 feel like it's a risk for them. You know, it's it's something yeah. that we're entirely comfortable with you sitting on a bright yellow couch, so you should have that bright yellow lining. Go for it. Why not? Um, for sure, <laughs> definitely. Very, um, very help draw out any inspiration from you. So. Um, yeah, I mean, I know we'll get on here right enough, but you've been in, you know, so you, you've seen the place, you know what it's like, and yeah. uh, you, you very much uh, had the, the benefit of sitting there and choosing your cloth and picking your lining, and, and you know what we're about. So, yeah, Definitely. it's 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 about 
letting you do the hard work. We just guide you. <laughs> Sounds like a good um, a good environment to walk into. The the Mac Mirror Inn that we had last week. We had um, Boutique Dave, Dave Worthington, and uh, Graham yep. Skinner is a, a friend of mine that does you know lots of um, art, artistic projects with with communities and stuff. And we spoke a lot about um, art, you know, creativity. And um, if you walk into somewhere like that that you've just described, I can imagine that working. You know, give people. Um, license to express themselves, you know, because they, they totally. come in, lots of vibrant colours here and then. If they really don't want that sort of thing, they're going to go for what they want, but it might make them feel a bit inspired or, I don't know, draw something from it. So it sounds good. Listen, we always say, um, listen, you know, in normal times, about 80% of what we do is the navy blue three-piece suit. You know, that's that's it. Um, and you get 20% of really funky and interesting things on the shelf. Um, but 80% of the time is that navy blue suit for the corporate world. But what we try to do, even with those guys, is just let them know that on the inside of that suit and on the buttonholes and the details and just express yourself a wee bit. Make it yours, you know. So um, you see a funky line in an air book, why not? Why not? You know, it's, it's yours. That's that's the little piece of it that's absolutely yours to keep, you know. Um, the blue bit is what your clients see, what your colleagues see, but the inside of that suit, you know it's there. You, you have some fun, you know. Um, you try to sign a... I mean, look, at, a nice, look, look at that liner there on the inside of that. Exactly. Flowers on it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah um, right. You know, you, you try to sign up a big client. You, you know, you sit there with a little wry smile on your face that you've got a big funky pink lining in your jacket. He doesn't know that. So, <laughs> <laughs> and would he take you quite as seriously if he did know? That's the thing. So... <laughs> And my, my first my first view or like insight into a bit of that bespoke tailoring was um so obviously i'm ex navy my dad was ex navy is ex navy as well and I, I first saw his one of his first um mess undressed shirts as it's called so a very formal shirt so double 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 uh, double cuffs nice smart yep. color all in white and everything like that right uh white uh white uh shirt but then you take take off your jacket to sit down for dinner and he had these really like luminescent colored flamingos on his <laughs> sleeves do you know what I mean? so ja jacket on it looks like a plain normal uh, white shirt do you know what i mean yeah. that, that you'd expect to find on on, on a tire like that do you know what i mean you sit down for dinner and, and it's like that it's that cheeky little re right smile going I, I can't wait to see everybody's faces in a minute when i take this jacket off That's you it. take your jacket yep. off and you just got this just this you know luminescent flamingos down the sleeves man it was amazing just for yeah. effect. That's it. That sounds good to me. I used to express myself through my socks back in my suit wearing days. If I had, you know, you've spoken about sort of plain navy suits and things for right, for business for the most part. Um, I used to, I used to have like whatever funky socks I could find, you know, whatever you know, flowers or animals or anything, just to have some sort of personality shine through. Just flash up. There are people, honestly, that still match the tight of the socks, and there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> Absolutely nothing wrong with that. It's, it's, sure mad funky yeah. <laughs> it's about it's about going though isn't it more than um matching exactly i think is that the etiquette would you say or or, or can uh, you do whatever you want uh, you know <clears throat> it's like everything else there are rules in life right and there are people who have written books on etiquette and bespoke tailoring and i pretty much tell just about every single unless they want my advice on etiquette if, if they want advice on etiquette i'll give them advice on etiquette but um, ninety percent of the people that walk through the door, I tell them to rip up the rule book and do what they want. Um, you know, uh, Jason in our, our Edinburgh studio, Mickey, oh, you met him. Um, Rich, you've got to meet this guy seriously. We might get him on as a guest next year. Yeah, actually, we might. Yeah, we, we should. He we is. Should. He is. He's, he's a phenomenal guy, honestly. Brilliant, absolutely top class. And uh, Jason is not afraid to mix and match his patterns and textures. Hell no. And, and so what? Absolutely, yeah. so what? But it rocks it. That's the thing. That's what it's about. You know, if you're going to do it, just wear it and wear it with attitude and own it. And nobody yeah. will be able to tell you otherwise. If you are a complete fashion disaster, then you know what? Just own that too. Yeah. Own that. Yeah. In fact, yeah, in fact, that could work in your favour if you embrace it and just roll with it. Totally. Then you just, might you, you stand a better chance of rocking it, don't you? At the end yeah. of the day, if somebody tells you you look like crap, just just say yeah, no. Yeah, that, was, <laughs> that was my intention. <laughs> I think there's some um, there's some parallels there between you know what the etiquette is or tradition or whatever says and dictates. You compare that to to whiskey and mm. people telling you yeah. how you should drink it. People telling you you should never make a cocktail with a single malt. Um, it's you do what you want. Is what yeah. we say similar to you. Put ice right? in it. Yeah, you know, I know it's it's shocking. Honestly, shocking. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> uh, but you should do 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 whatever you know. You 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 pay for it. You do what you like with it. Um, you know. Yeah. As simple as you know, it's it, just, it's just to enjoy. You know, it's exactly the same. It applies to both. It's you know a three piece suit. It's yours to enjoy. A sports jacket. It's yours to enjoy. A whiskey. Exactly the same. What's what's the most um, absurd thing that you've made? Perhaps absurd's not the word that you might like to use, but um, out um, there. yeah, I, I made a shirt for a clown once, and that was a bit bonkers. <laughs> That wasn't um, me, by the way. That wasn't me. I'm not the clown. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was just about to, you know, say. I was just about to get the record straight there, Mickey, on that one. Um, I made a shirt for a clown once. Every single part of the shirt was different. Top collar, under collar, this panel, that panel, you know, this sleeve, that sleeve, totally everything. Everything was different. And he rocked it. Um, absurd. Once also did for a client's, um, I believe it was his 50th birthday, um, a, a sort of... Um, Short jacket one side, long coat the other side. Greatest showman, so he could play two characters. Oh, okay, you know, cool. remember the old style theatre where you turn to the left <laughs> and you're one character, turn to the right, you're the other. You know that. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so it was the the sort of, um, you know, the the I can't remember. I've, actually, I'm going to admit something. Here. I've never seen the Greatest Showman. Mm -hmm. <gasps> Short horror. It's okay. Never mind. I've, 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 I've had it on the I've had on the Skybox recorded yeah. uh, for for ages. No, and I, I was it. just not got round to seeing it. <laughs> but I still love the songs. Anyway, the, um, the the lead character, Hugh Jackman's character, was was basically what he was trying to get at, and it was again something different that we've never really done before. But it worked. It worked a treat for him. So yeah, aye. Um, we get all sorts of requests. Whether we actually go through and end up making them, you know, that's a, that's another story. But um, we get all sorts. So uh, aye, that, it's that, fun. That's that's a good point to ask the uh, our watchers a question. Actually, guys. If you could have one part of your suit a little bit wacky, what would it be, basically? Yeah, so like, say like your lining of your jacket or something like that, do you know what I mean? Uh, and we'll see an example of a lining in a second when we talk about my suit. Um, but what, 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 sort of, what, 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 what would you have, basically? You know, um, let, let us know, guys, you know. Or what um, have you had? If you've had something what, before, that, what, even what Even better, had? yeah. Even better, yeah. yeah. If you've been through the, you been through the bespoke tailoring process, what did you get done, you know? Let's see your wacky stuff. I think the most wacky thing I've got at the moment um, is my oddball subscription. So the the gentleman's boxer shorted socks. Uh, Chris is laughing because he's. It was quite funny actually. So I'll, I'll tell the oddballs bit first of what it is. Right. So it's um, it's a charity for testicular cancer, and they do a monthly subscription for nine ninety nine, and you get a pair of boxer shorts and a pair of socks with it as well. Like every third month, you get like a wee free gift and things like that. Right. So it's a great cause. And the, the boxer shorts are phenomenal. You can go plain or you can get the wacky ones. Obviously, I signed up for the wacky ones. So every month I get a pair of wacky boxer shorts, right? And honestly, they are just funky. And you get a matching pair of socks with it as well. So I've got hundreds of pairs of the funky socks and I've got all these um, matching boxes as well. well. So when I went through to Chris's the other week, just before we hit the lockdown and again to get measured up uh, for, for my final fitting for my suit, um, <laughs> I obviously stripped down jeans off, put the back of the trousers on, right? And Chris went, oh, hang on a minute, stop there. So I had a pair of my oddballs on. He's like, we've got, we've just made a suit that looks pretty similar to those boxes. I was like, no way. It's identical. Yeah, and he pulls his suit out, full suit, right? Full suit was just this mental pattern, crazy coloured suit. I'm like, that. oh, my God, that is amazing. <laughs> it was it was almost like you had your boxers made out of the same material. It was just so uh, close. Um, oh, no, you never, you never believed it. Um, I mean that 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 couple had their wedding postponed. The wedding's actually um, next weekend, so I'm looking forward to um, seeing that asked, out, Yeah, asked about some wacky stuff, and I deliberately didn't mention that one because the wedding's not been yet. But you know, when it's when it's been done, we'll definitely send in some pictures for you guys to share out with people yeah, listening awesome. tonight because it definitely. is probably the loudest suit that I've ever made. Um, maybe not the wackiest, but definitely the loudest. So we'll, yeah, it was we'll def see that. It was definitely colourful, that's for sure. It was we'll definitely colourful. I was like, ah, that is amazing. <laughs> that is amazing. Now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we've just seen a comment come through from Kate uh, of, of Callum and Kate, um, some of our, our Mac Mira friends. Um, yeah, waistcoat pattern with whiskey bottles, obviously. I mean, that sounds all right to me. You put your, you've got your jacket over the top. People can just see that, you know, colourful sort of that flashing underneath them. And that looks all right. Sounds all right to me. What Absolutely. sort of whiskey bottles would they be? McMeer or Glen Scotia, Kate? You'd have to let us know. Yeah. Probably, probably both. We've probably got a waistcoat for each one. 
<laughs> one side of each. I had um, the first suit I had made um, back in 2012, and I was too embarrassed to actually get any pictures of it because uh, I looked very different now to how I did then. Um, I had that. That was a, 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 a tweed suit on the outside. I had um, a faint blue lines and and uh, pink sort of lines. Fuchsia, I was told, but it was a new colour to me. Um, yeah. yeah. No, but the the lining of that, I had that in that same fuchsia from the the lines on the tweed. So it was quite loud outside and also quite loud <laughs> inside. Nice. And had um had my name. Uh, I, I didn't think I'd ever have another suit made. So I thought, right, I'll get one now that I would you'll never be able to buy off the rack. You know, just yeah. something that um I was, I was quite a loud guy at the time. I perhaps you know, obviously I'm very quiet now. You don't hear much from me. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, that I was I was dead chuff as proud of it. I had my my initials stitched inside and. Um, somebody on a, a, a bit of advice I had, although I haven't tested it some time, probably phones are too big now. Somebody said, Get a pocket made on the inside that's the perfect size for your phone so that you can yeah. just, you know, two fingers in and out and you don't lose it and you can come straight in. I think phones are a uh, very different shape now, so probably no we get asked, and fit uh, in it anyway. In, in Glasgow, uh, we, we often get asked for secret pockets, I can't possibly say what for, but um, in Glasgow, more than <laughs> more. <laughs> There's a, there's a, an example of a, a, a funky graffiti style lining. Wow, yeah, yeah that is good. People yeah. love these sort of things. Yeah, I that's one of the whiskey bottles on, but I, I don't, I don't have one in this book. But, um, so I, I, I think for my suit choice, I went quite subtle on everything, but it's that it's like the the accents though is is what sets it apart from like a, a normal run of the mill suit. Carl, have you got the? Oh, that's funky. So that that's my that's my <laughs> suit there. Uh, you can just about see there's two. You've got two red buttons on the cuff. Uh, I'm going to have a red button on the bottom of my waistcoat. Uh, and it's just a nice, uh, like a gold filigree uh, inliner with uh, with a nice check blue pattern on the outside. Um, but Chris also did something quite nice for me as well. I, I went and I saw the suit uh, for my first fitting and things like that. And I was like, wow, that is just amazing. That is beautiful. You know, and it was like, yeah, just pop the collar in it. And I went, why? So, so I popped the collar and he, and he did that underneath for me. Uh, yeah. And I was like, oh my God. And you know, when you get dead excited, right? Yeah, and you do, it. and you, you do one of those, me. yeah, you do. I, I did one of those stupid little happy dances. Now that's not normally like me, right? <laughs> so I'm stood there, right? A grown ass man of 41, right? Stood with two other grown ass men holding a piece of cloth, essentially, right? And doing a stupid wee giggly happy dance <laughs> in the middle of the wet in the middle of the showroom. <laughs> oh, Carl, Carl, can you show me his face again, mate? Can we have a look at Mickey's face holding up the his name? Because you, can see, you can see the glee in his face as he does it. Oh, yeah. I honestly wish I'd recorded the happy dance. I mean, if I'd recorded the happy dance, it'd be on a GIF. I'd upload it oh, everywhere. Exactly. Yeah. No, that, yeah. that, that, that would have yeah, been one for the ages, mate. I think. <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 a six foot seventeen stone man just dancing like a really really kid, like do you know what I mean? <laughs> that, and is that Paisley? Is it, uh, we've had uh, Gary. Hello, Gary. Thanks for um, for tuning in again. Um, yeah, he can, he's asked us if it's Paisley on the gold. Yeah, yeah. Paisley pattern. Yep. Yeah. So it's a, a blue a blue leaf on gold um, gold silk, and it's beautiful, it really is, and it goes really well with the cloth that Mickey's chosen. So. Um, yeah, it's yeah. just some of the accents and that. So it's like um, I've got like the inside of the jacket as an accent on my double vent and all that type of stuff. It's just just yeah. little things that are, are in this. Just just sets it out. It's really really nice. So I can't wait to pick it up. Uh, so yeah, so that would be good. That would be good. So if I had it now, I would, I would I'd be sat here wearing it if I'd had it now. <laughs> yeah, maybe for your Christmas one. Um, right, I, it, won't, it won't be long. It won't be long. How many um, how many fittings did you go for, Mick? Uh, so the, the so the initial uh, measurement basically in choosing your patterns that was the first one. Um, let's see, J Jason and Chris obviously have been in the game for quite a long time, so they know what they're doing, or you'd like to think so. They they, they tell me they do anyway. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, so I went. So they said, right, Nick, your suits in. So I went through, put it all on and everything, and it was maybe what two, maybe three changes tops. Yeah, uh, just, that, just that we had to do. It was little, yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah, nothing, nothing crazy whatsoever. So it's like, yes, just that one fabric. <laughs> Lock, lockdown hasn't been going. Don't bring it up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so no, so yeah, so that went away to get uh, to, to get altered, and uh, obviously then we went into lockdown and everything like that, which is which has put everything on hold really. Um, so yeah, so yeah, so the initial fitting 
uh, measurement and picking the fabrics and linings and how you want it and all that sort of stuff and talking about the style you want your trousers and if you want it for doing a belt on or doing like braces and just literally you would I couldn't believe right how many like different measurements and questions there were for getting a suit fitted <laughs> It was, you getting, it we, was you know, we, we kind of liken it here to, if you go buy a brand new car nowadays, mm. we kind of liken it to uh, going into the Audi dealership and the guy sits you down and says, okay, do you want the 18-inch alloys or the 19-inch alloys? Do you want them, uh, you know, with the, the silver detail? Do you want them with the black detail? Um, do you want red stitching in your seats or blue stitching in your seat? You know, they, they take you through the, the, the questions to build it, you know? So everybody knows what a suit is. A suit's a suit, but a car's a car. Right. And it's just right. those little, you know, the, the details that make it what you want that, that sort of, you know, makes it makes it yours really. So yeah, that um, personalization touch. Yeah, totally, absolutely. And you know, the, the thing about uh, Audis is that you know you can obviously sell them on and still get a bit of money for them, but uh, good luck doing that with your suits. I thought that was mine. With my, I've got names in the, initialed in both of the ones I've had made. So unless yeah. I've got somebody with the the same initial <laughs> name surname, uh, yeah. can't go anywhere. And they have to be, you know, a lot smaller than me. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> well. yeah. so what, um, what's the normal process then on, on that point? So when, when someone comes in, they make an appointment with you. Um, you know, where does it go from sort of start to? Yeah, so I mean, we, we um, offer a, a free consultation. Um, there's never any obligation. Come in and chat about it. Have a coffee. Tell us what you're looking for, and we'll, we'll help guide you. Um, generally, um, a lot of people kind of have an idea that they're going to go through with the purchase anyway. So, you know, that first appointment will then measure you, um, you know, uh, process the order for you. Um, no names, no names. Um, I was going to say, I, I, rec I, I recognise that guy. I recognise that guy. <laughs> he's with his face mask upside down and all. Um, but, <laughs> Sorry, mate, he, he did a lot of things on the pitch upside down as well, so it's not a problem. <laughs> anyway. Um, <laughs> you may be watching. Um, That's good. Um, Evening, John. <laughs> so um yeah when, once the the client sort of decided what they want to go for um we it's all kind of explain the full process and our, our um, factory is in Kathmandu in nepal um, we work with a team of tailors out there that i've known for a long time um and they do a fantastic job so the order gets uh, emailed across to the guys along with a couple of pictures of the client as well and all the measurements that we've taken um, we're also looking at your body shape, how your chest is in relation to your stomach, how your stomach is in relation to your, you know, your, your, uh, <laughs> your back shape, you. <laughs> and, yeah, what, what your shoulder angle is. We're looking at whether your um, seat is, you know, large or flat, if you like. So, I mean, there's a, there's a lot to take into account. Um, but that all goes off. Um, our master tailor then cuts a paper pattern um, where um, that's then passed on to the stitchers who will make this suit start to finish for you. Um, and then when it comes to the UK, it is a case of getting you in, trying it all on, making sure it fits properly, doing the appropriate adjustments and um, sending it off to the alterations team to, to complete it. So the, the benefit of having a paper pattern is that if you want another suit in a year's time, we've got your pattern. It's here. You don't have to get measured again. Um, the biggest benefit there is, or the first question that we ever ask anyone there is, how does your last suit still fit? You know, <laughs> I was just wondering about that. You said, yeah, yeah, you know, how long that. ago was it? <laughs> if you're pretty happy with the way things were or are, um, then we can pretty much just choose your new cloth, choose your line, and take you through the style and order it off the bat. Um, in the future, coming soon, uh, will be the ability to go onto our website, our website, and design your own suit and order it, you know, straight away. Uh, if you're quite happy with the pattern, then nothing needs done. You just need to order it, pay for it, and in a few weeks' time, it'll turn up at your door. Simple as that. Um, so we're kind of trying to help people create their own personal shop. You know, everybody's you used to talk about the shops that you went to to buy certain things because the jeans out of Diesel were good or, you know, the, the, the shirts out of um, Thomas Pink's were, were good for you or you like TM Lewin's best or whatever, you know. But this is, uh, this is yours. And it doesn't matter, you know, um, I suppose if you put on a, a pound here or there, we can always... You know, draw for the pattern. Listen, you know, we, we need a wee extra inch around the waist. No problem. We'll get that done before we cut it. Absolutely fine. Um, you know, and if you manage to lose some weight while it's being made, then we'll take it off. We'll adjust it when it comes in. Don't worry about it. But it's yours. It's your little personal shop. So you can have a, come and have anything made for overcoats to pocket squares, if you like. That was going to be my next question. Yeah, the other things that you make um, as well, because I, I had a couple of shirts made 
um, for my tailor, you know, this is seven or eight years ago now. Yep. Um, and I was dead chuffed with them. You know, the best fitted shirts I've ever had. You know, so. yeah. Yep. Well, they should be, should you, they? Well, yeah, yeah, well, they, yeah. They, they should be, of course. Yeah, but, yeah, shots. I've never had as well, but obviously there's been a few fish suppers done. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> last week. Got this knockdown pound or two one, I think. Um, but that, yeah, that's yeah, the point. Yeah. We, we do that with with, um, with casks as well, where people mm. can choose. Um, uh, we've got a res two res two cask programs. We yeah. have called the reserve cask, and um, and yeah, Mick, as Mick, Mick knows people can choose. Um, what uh, what spirit type they want, whether they want it yeah. peated or unpeated, as well as you know, are they a bit more impatient and they want to buy something that's already spent a few years maturing in something? Um, then you can choose the cask type, and you know that's that's obviously going to have a huge amount of influence on the flavour of your whiskey, the warehouse location as well. So not as many facets, perhaps as as you know you can choose with a suit, but but you can still make it your own thing yeah. and. Have a but, it's still, yeah, but it's still a bespoke process, you know. Yes. It is, you know, you yes. choose your wood type, your spirit type, what warehouse it goes into, Amazing. how long it's going to be in there, etc. And then, uh, yeah, and it really comes into its own when you pick the labels, yes. um, you know. So uh, obviously, Chris knows a little bit about this as well because uh, okay. I've spoken to him about an, uh, an Edinburgh Taylor and Company uh, potential whiskey. <laughs> and so that's yeah, something he's, he's going to mull over, hopefully. But yeah, so like literally, you know, any, it can be as complicated as that. Or as simple as literally, I think we, we did one for a wedding as well. Um, yeah, so I'm, yeah, it doesn't get a lot more simple than Milroy's, really. Um, yeah. But I think, I think the simplest one that I saw on paper was um, the one for the wedding, which is literally um, groom's name, a wee heart silhouette, and the bride's name, and then the date, I think it was, and uh, the name of the wedding. So it was just, just that. And then the casket for in the bottom two thirds. So, yeah, so yeah, that, that process is very much like what you're saying, Nicholas. You know what I mean? You get to choose every little facet you know i think the the, the the biggest thing that's going to be happening in the next sort of two three years is personal it's already happening personalized services even mm. your night trainers you can have them personalized now yeah, yeah. Nice idea, yeah. Personalized. you know everything now every company out there now realizes that no people no longer i mean fashion can be bought right but style you need to have that that's you know, there's, there's a famous quote about that. Anyway, um, point being is that people used to want to buy the hottest ticket. You know, they all they all wanted the five oh ones when they came. You know, the, the jeans when they came out. They all wanted, um, you know, recently the Balenciagas or the Yeezys. You know, that's the thing. Yeah, Everybody yeah. sort of jumps on the bandwagon with these things, but these brands are now realizing that these people now want to have their own Yeezys or their own Nike Air Max or their own. Um, you know, we were talking about a few minutes ago the, the sort of um, the, the Converse trainers, <laughs> you know, where you send in a design of your own and they'll print it on them. It's so personal now, the, the, the world's so personal. At one point, and this might still be the case, but at one point, there were no two minis on the road the same, you know, the car. Oh, okay, there were no two minis. I think there was a million minis on the road at one point, and no two were the same. Um, because people personalised them when they bought them. They sat down with the dealer and they said, checkered roof, um, Union Jack tail lights, you know. Um, they, they, they designed them the way they wanted them. So at one point, there were no two minis in the road the same. Uh, it's just incredible when you think about how many how many of those cars were sold. So, and I, I'll be honest with you, I mean, I've, I have actually only done two suits the same and they were for the same guy. He just bought the same suit, you know, one one after the other. Um, but, <laughs> but, you know, apart from that, you know, there's no two people out there with the same suits. That's mm. that's kind of how it's gone with us. Everybody yeah. likes to sort of choose their own details. And it'll be the same yeah. with you with the, with the bespoke um, whiskey idea. It'll be, yeah. you know, um, people will design their own their own tastes, if you like. So Exactly, exactly. Massive yeah. market, so, you know, the, personal market's going to be massive. Yeah, there's no two whiskeys the same, you know, just because, especially for single cask stuff. So it might come from the same wood, it might have the same spirit going there, it might go on the same day. You know, the cask might even be made from the same tree, but those two whiskeys, even side by side, will come out completely different. Yeah. You know, you can literally do everything the same, but nature and time will just take its toll and they'll both come up and they'll taste completely different. Uh, mm. it's, it's, it's quite crazy that way, really. So, yeah, in the single cask programs that we have, there's, you know, no two whiskeys are the same. Well, I don't know if this is a bit of a, a stretch, but um, I'm thinking about like the the seasonal range. Obviously, you know, we make you know batches. There's fifteen thousand bottles are made the same as the other fourteen thousand nine hundred ninety nine. 
but, um, <laughs> but we never but we never replicate the same seasonal no again. correct and, yeah. and there's been one or two where the names have been shared with things that we've released 10 15 years ago um but, they're, but they're, the recipe's they're slightly different the recipe's different and they are different yep. so sort of, there's another individual thing or well, that individualism that sort of celebrating that um not necessarily through the seasonals but just in general and culture and things what you're saying now chris i really buy into that yeah, um, yeah. it gives you an opportunity to be and to so, you know you said when you walk into your lobby early and you've got the blue walls and uh did you say the canary yellow sofa yeah yeah yep. encourage people to come out of their shell a little bit and uh express themselves yeah. and it's all about becoming an individual at the end of the I, day. I, I think jason sort of pulls that out of you anyway doesn't he really just because oh, of the guy that jason is that like the, the edinburgh the edinburgh showroom manager um just because of the, his personality and the way he dresses and just the way he is you know yeah if, if you if you're slightly hiding something and you don't want to quite be yourself Jason just dragged that right out of here, just by yeah. meeting the guy. He's, he's that kind of guy, honestly. He's, uh, I, I've, I've not got enough love for that man. He's fantastic, honestly. And he, if we didn't have more appointments the day you came in, he would have been utterly pitched by the end of the day. Oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, however, the, look, you're not going to come into a studio and sit in a big bright yellow canary yellow couch and you know buy a plain suit. You know, it's just yeah. it is going to do something to you. That's the thing. Um, listen, I love, and I've done it myself, you know, I've, I've worked in places or I've had studios where it's the Chesterfield brown sofa, you know, with the, the varnished wood floor and the nice rug. I've had the antlers on the walls. I've, you know, I, I've done it. I've done it all. The hunting the, one style. The minute you walk in and you smell the linseed oil, for, you know, polishing the wood and all that stuff. But come on, every tailor's got that. Every tail on the land has got that when you walk in. And we just tried to be a little bit different. We just tried to sort of give... There's, there's, a, there's a thing out there now called Design Labs. And you, you go into um, marketing companies or, or creative industries and they've got Design Labs. And when you walk into a Design Lab, the whole environment is supposed to sort of put you in that mode of, I'm going to do something fantastic today. You know, it's supposed to sort of draw the inspiration out from you. Um, and there are some fantastic examples of Design Labs, even across Glasgow, the Lighthouse... Um, yeah. building is, is, is a great example of the, the sort of yeah. um, design lab workshops and, and whatnot and you're not going to go in there and be devoid of ideas like you're not going to come into your studio and not know what you want you know it's, it's just going to open your mind a wee bit and because you're also seeing other things that we've made for other people on the shelf um, you're going to mm -hmm. see some um, examples on mannequins you're going to um, very soon we'll have a lookbook as well that's going to have things like Mickey's suit in it, you know, some of the, the slightly more um, wilder, more interesting things that we've done. And you know, uh, all right, Chris, in, will, will you also have his big grinning face on that, that picture? <laughs> Mate, I'm going this? up as a window picture. It's going up as a window <laughs> picture in the front window. <laughs> Make that full size. There's a big wall at the back of the office. We'll have that blown up <laughs> for everybody to see. Um, but yeah, you're, you're going to come in and just um, see all these ideas and think, why am I looking at a plain charcoal with a silver lining? You know, <laughs> yeah. let's, let's do something. If, if these people can wear it, why can't I? So, yeah, absolutely. It's there just to sort of help draw the ideas out. But do you know the, the great thing about it is the number of people out there that actually do know what they want, and it is wild, are now getting in touch with us because they're seeing the kind of things that we do on Instagram um, or on Facebook, and they're, they're, they're seeing that we are capable of creating um, these sort of statement pieces these one-off unique things that um maybe another tailor wouldn't lead you down this path maybe he'd he'd want to be more reserved and sort of rein it in and, and keep it sensible we don't man you know we, we want to have fun with you we want you to come back in a year and go that suit i had last year was phenomenal we need to better it you know <laughs> that's that's what we're all about come how, back how can and, we go in and top this yeah, yeah. Turn it up yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Ah, spinal tap. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> We're the spinal tap of tailors. Then that's it. There you go. Yeah, I like that. Now there's a, there's a quote, guys. Okay, if you see that on Instagram stuff, I, I don't know if Chris will end up getting sued by the, the filmmaker or anything like that, but we'll cover it. It's fine. We'll it'll be fine. It'll be fine. So, but no, Chris. Obviously, so Edinburgh Tailor and Company is is for maybe not the masses per se. Uh, yeah. But it's, it's it's that more affordable, bespoke tailor inside of life, isn't it? That's, That's open right. to a lot more people, etc. But sounds, you've got you've like got another company. company. Yeah, oh, sorry, mate, sorry, but only only because I think that was a good point that you were saying. There, it's worth worth sort of um, expanding on slightly. That um, you know, your 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 place sort of in the middle, perhaps you know, stepping stone people that have been buying stuff off the rack for a while, yeah. want to do something of themselves, but a bit 
know, intimidated by perhaps maybe the place they've got the antlers on the wall of the Chesterfields and yeah, they, totally. more accessible. The point of Edinburgh Tail and Cut, I mean, we started £299 for a two piece suit, right? Uh, and it's handmade and it's bespoke. And by the time you've sort of put a line in it and, and styled it the way you want, it's maybe another hundred quid, you know. But I mean, you're, you're still talking about four hundred pounds there um, for a bespoke suit, you know. So um, the way I see it is that's phenomenal value. That's picking up for where the high street is, but yep. filling the gap between sort of high street and, and bespoke tail, and you know, <laughs> as we know it, as as yeah. it's, as it's normally not. Um, but yeah, Edinburgh Tail and Company is there to. Um, there's a number of people out there that aspire to have something made, right? And they sort of... I love misconceptions. Misconceptions are that um, bespoke tail and costs an absolute fortune. Well, it does. It's not a misconception. It is. It, it really does. You know, if you go down to, yeah, if you go down to the, the very famous Savile Row in London, you're, you're probably talking two and a half, three, three and a half grand starting price for a bespoke suit. Um, I know that, you know, the rent and rates is a lot higher down there. Um, you know, the, the sort of team that they've got whittling away in the basement costs a lot of money, I understand. You know, but by <laughs> our costs down, we can we can allow this um sort of lower starting point for the for the bespoke um suits. So yeah, Edinburgh Tail and Company is there to, you know, bring out those people that aspire to have one made, dipping their toe in the water as as you want to if, if you want to say, um, come and try it, see what it's like. You know, you, you haven't then shelled out a hell of a lot of money if it's not for you. And it isn't for everyone. That's the thing. Some people mm. can walk into a Hugo Boss or a, a Manny shop and pick up a really nice suit and it'll fit them like a glove. You know, no qualms. They're not going to get the design that we give them, but, you know, they'll, they'll get a very nice suit. Um, but, you know, for those that, that want to dip their toe in the water and try it, then Edinburgh Tailing Company's there. Absolutely. Uh, you're not going to break the bank and you'll get a beautiful suit for it. But if yeah, yeah. I, I, well, look, I was going to go on to there, but... Um, if you do want to break the bank a little bit, you are that a bit more affluent because uh, you, you, you've got your, your, your second business. Um, imagine to the title as well, uh, Chris yeah. McCackle and Tailoring, um, which I, I love the name. I think it's fantastic. There you Thank go. Thank you. Um, oh, I like that a, peacock. That, that, that's, that's, that's a wonderful bit of imagery above it because yeah. it looks smart. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. it's also a bit understated because it's just a single feather. And you know you you can peacock with your suit with the lining that you have you as just, well. Yeah, the nail. Yeah, I think you just. Yeah, I head. think you literally yeah. just took away the next five minutes of Chris talking about <laughs> it. <there. laughs> yeah. um, what's he talking about now? Yeah. <laughs> about right. the, the no, tell, us, tell us about it, Chris. Tell us. Let us know. Um, what, so you know the, the peacock feather was the sort of emblem that I, I chose to to run with. Um, a because my daughter loves peacocks, and B because it is a, a an endearing um, bespoke tailoring term. Um, peacocking was uh, quite a big thing in the sixties and seventies. You know, um, for those that that sort of know their onions when it comes to bespoke tailoring. Um, often a visit to, to the, the top tailors in London would be uh, on the cards for the, the guys getting their mohairs for going to the dancing on the Saturday night, you know, and they'd have the six or seven buttons up the cuff and bits of, you know, lining in here, you know, showing off peacock and all the colours, every buttonhole a different colour, um, popular with the mods as well, you know, so <laughs> I used to love that sort of thing. Uh, and two, well, two or three, uh, two tailors in particular sort of really... Um, brought that on if you like um there was mr nutter and mr sexton and um, the two sort of rock stars of the tailoring world back then you know um and mr sexton's still around today so um these guys just sort of kind of like what i was saying with edinburgh tailoring company these guys just sort of took tailoring and um shook it by the tail feathers if you like and said come on in <laughs> And do appropriate, nuts. appropriate. Yeah, absolutely. You know, let's let's um, let's peacock a bit. Let's show the ladies what we've got. That was what it was sort of all about. And uh, to this day, it still rings true. But I, th I think my personal opinion on it is there aren't many tailors out there nowadays that try to sort of um, live that. You know, have that embodiment of their business. A lot of them try to achieve the the sort of top end, if you like. They, they sort of try to achieve this gentleman's club. Um, yeah. You know the very yes sir, no sir, three bags full sir kind of uh, attitude, and I'd, the only thing I've got to say to that is that I, I like to be a real bloke. I, I like to be a real person with people walking in the door. 
you know, treat everybody with respect, of course, you know, but at the end of the day, um, I'm Chris for shots and I happen to be a tailor, you know, and we make some really good suits, but I'm, you know, I'm not going to look down my half rimmed bespectacled nose at you, you know, so um, <laughs> it's very, very much a, a, a sort of um, tradition in tailoring that I, I, I'm trying to break a bit. But, you know, we were talking about Christopher McGowan tailoring. I'm still that guy. I'm still Christopher McGowan. I still like to encourage people to do funky things, but it's a different feel. Um, I'm going to have to sort of move studio right enough, but we were based in the Hotel Duvan at One Devonshire Gardens in Glasgow. Um, sadly, since COVID's sort of had us kicked out of there for a wee while, we can't, you know, we can't go in there and tailor. Um, so I'm going to have to look for a new home, but... Yeah, a, a lovely hotel, you, you know, quite relaxed environment. Come in, reception staff will look after you, get your coffee, um, you know, when I'm finished with my client or, you know, finished unpacking my bags. Um, I'll come up and get you. We'll, we'll go down to the room, which was, Nicky's been in it as well. Um, came to the, the wine and cigar night last year. Yep. Um, it's the, the terrace room. Um, I think it's actually the Glen Goyne in the Hotel Devan. Um, which backs onto the terrace gardens and it's, it's beautiful in the summer because we can actually have the consultations outside. Yeah, stunning. It's just sublime. Yeah, but I mean, we use, in Christopher McGowan tail, and we're using some of the finest um, mills in the UK and from Italy uh, in particular um, to help people create their garments. So we, we call them in the industry, they're mills and merchants. They're, they're, they're sort of um, selling cut lengths. Another thing that I failed to mention about Edinburgh Tailoring Company is that we have our own stock already bought, already in store in our factory in Kathmandu. So everything that you see can be sourced within minutes of the order going through. Christopher McGowan Tailoring is made in the UK and it is sourced from the mills um, around the UK and Italy. Um, the cloth comes here and we have the suit made here. So it is a higher price point because the costs are higher. It's as simple as that. But we're still not quite um, up to the, the sort of London, a very modest, shall I say, uh, £1,200 for a two-piece suit. Um, and I think on average you're probably looking at around about the sort of 2000 to £2,200. Um, we could go as high as you like, but we don't often. Um, I think the most expensive one we've ever made was a, a 24-carat pinstripe gold um, suit. Well, very hold faint. the bus. Yeah. Literally, literally 24 <clears throat> carat gold strands through the yeah. suit. Yep. The pinstripe wow. is made from a, a 24 carat uh, gold thread. Yeah. Um, <laughs> beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. But, you know, yeah, crazy. I can imagine. Yeah, um, yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's crazy. <laughs> believe it or not, there's something yeah. even more priceless in tailing. It's, um, it's Vicuña wool um, made from a, an animal that's. Uh, very hard to harvest from. Um, you can get, I think you can get one harvest every two years from it. Um, of usually, you know, per animal about two hundred and fifty grams, and even of that, only about half of it is usable. So, it it, it costs so much. Some some vicuñas are about three thousand pounds a meter for us to buy, just wow. to make it for you. Wow. You know, so <laughs> wow. So that's what the that cost. Stuff. You know, I mean, that's the wholesale cost price. That's yeah, crazy. That, yeah. That's, that's, yeah. The, the second. Saffron yeah. per meter material, yeah. yeah, yeah, and you're talking maybe three meters to make a two piece suit if it's plain, you know. So that's yeah. a 20 grand suit, easy. You and know? that's just for material, that's not that's not cost of the consultation, that's no. not cost of it being put together, the buttons, and just everything else that goes along with, yeah. with making plus the that. suit up. Well, I went <laughs> Don't forget the vet, good ladies and gentlemen. Don't forget the vet. What sort of lining did um did this person have? Because he's obviously got a relatively loud, you know, cloth and, and, and outer appearance. What sort of well, lining? On the, 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 the gold oh, pinstripe, you're never going to believe it was it was the most boring pinstripe. It was the most <laughs> simple lining ever. He just chose a black. Uh, it was a black pinstripe suit. He just chose a black lining. It was it was nothing. Oh wow. It was nothing, but I mean, it was more about the pin straight than anything yeah, else. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, and he should remain, he should remain nameless. Um, Good. Yeah. Don't want folk, you know, mugging him for his suit. I don't know. You don't have to tell us his name, but you can give him his address or something, no? Yeah. What's that? You, I said you don't have to say his name, but if you can give their address. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying, you know, I don't, I don't know how much you'd actually get for it at Ramsden's. Um <laughs> 
because <laughs> right, because the cashier would have to sit there and pick all the gold out of it. <laughs> <laughs> the labour cost of that alone, you know. Exactly. Um, but yeah, people exactly. do. Make, remember, um, remember when Conor McGregor brought out the um, the I don't know if we can swear on here, but the FU pinstripe. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It, was, it was fighting. It was the Nate Diaz fight. It was the Nate Diaz yeah. fight. Yeah. Yeah. And it came out with the FU pinstripe. So, yeah. we, we, believe it or not, we had a customer in looking for a suit with his name woven into it in the mill that makes it. But So, this cloth was like £50 pounds a metre. Yeah, 55 yeah. pounds a metre, right? To have your name put in. Minimum order, maybe, let's say, 10 metres. Um, but when Conor McGregor came out with that suit, um, it all of a sudden was like £500 pounds a metre. Mm. You know? <laughs> Shocking. <laughs> Man, baby. So... <laughs> Yeah, and uh, what a suit it was. So, yeah, Conor McGregor did a lot, a lot for us over the years. I know. Uh, did a lot for a, few, for, for a few industries as well. I won't leave out the uh, obvious that we, we shouldn't talk about here on the yeah, whiskey. We're, we're, not, you know? we're, not, we're not mentioning proper number 12 now. <laughs> it's, it's not a whiskey. <laughs> you said it. You said it. <laughs> yeah. we, we did not say that. You said that. That's fine. You can I say did. that. <laughs> absolutely absolutely we don't we don't want to be the bitchy guys that bitch about other whiskeys <laughs> oh no brilliant so uh so chris you know we've gone on not gone on we've we've talked it quite length there about about tailoring and stuff like that yeah we've touched some whiskey now what do you what what, sh, what do you do to to unwind what, what's your favorite pastime um play drums okay cool um, doesn't let anybody else in the house unwind right enough, but you know, um, <laughs> it's you about loud, loud suits. You're talking about this loud, uh, you know, entrance where people can come in, all these bright colors, loud suits, loud instruments. That's your thing, yeah, mate. Yeah. You, I think you're getting the impression. I'm just loud, yeah, absolutely. Um, no, I play drums, I, I like to play drums, it, it, it helps me chill out a wee bit. Um, yeah, I mean. It's been a hard year to chill out, hasn't it, Mickey? I mean, you know, <laughs> uh, as, as a business owner. <laughs> uh, yeah, for you, for definitely. Do you know what I actually do like? Here's, here's something that I do like to chill out with is getting around the fire pit with the boys and having a nice whiskey and a cigar. Um, absolutely love that. There's nothing beats it. Even in this cold weather, you know, you just wrap up out there, get the fire on and, and sit and talk absolute nonsense. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. <laughs> I, so I think that's uh, that, that's that's last orders, uh, and as everybody knows by now, it's something that we've just started on last orders. Um, I think you just started to tell that story there, though, Chris. Uh, but I'll, we'll get to the question properly. Um, this is the bit we like to call the whiskey scenario. Um, what whiskey? So, what's in your glass? Where are you? Who are you with? If anybody, go for it, my man. Go, you see, actually. Um absolute cracker best laugh um in a long time we me and a couple of the lads jumped into a camper van one of the one of the, the boys owns a camper van we went up to king's Barnes beach uh, in the east coast of fife and got the fire pit out one of the boys owns a fire pit uh took it up there he makes some out of gas canisters so he's cut this gas okay. canister a couple of big bags of twigs onto the beach and we just sat there all night man and had a laugh smoked cigars uh, drank whiskey in the glass. I mean, that night, I, for the life of me, can't remember. It might have been a Dalmore. Um, however, I, I couldn't care what it was that night. It was just a brilliant night. Um, I'm sure we had some Glenfiddich up there as well, but um, no, it was good. Absolutely brilliant. So that's that's my idea. Yeah. There's a good wee whiskey scenario. I like that one. Nice. Yeah. Nice. No, that does sound pretty spot on. That that does sound pretty spot on. I can suck, right, on, I can suck some of the, the the romance out of that that scenario if you want a little bit. Just the last time I had um, a fire on the beach, uh, I was on the Isle of Mull on uh, on Kilvacuan Beach on the south coast or southwest uh, tip, and uh, I had a few friends. We made a fire and we were sat around it. We we pulled a log over, you know, this driftwood log that we found. We were sat in it and we we're having a few drams. And we just spent the whole night watching all these like I don't know, sand mites or bugs or whatever sort of come out in the dark and all just um, like some you know lemmings just jumping into the fire. But it, it made my skin crawl. So I'm so sorry to take away from how nice it sounded to your, your situation there. But my 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 more immediate memory of something similar is, is absolutely terrible. The opposite way. Waking up in the morning just full of red bumps where you got bitten the life out of you. 
There's always one, Mickey, isn't there? There's always one. <laughs> it's, it's normally him. It's normally the same one as well, so that's fine. He's consistent, bless him. He's consistent. Good. <laughs> Happy days. No, guys, so I think that uh, that about wraps us up for this evening. So, Chris, honestly, thanks a lot for joining us, mate. And uh, for the watchers out there, yeah, Edinburgh Taylor and Company, or if you've got a few extra quid in the back burner, when to spend, and uh, then Chris McGowan Tailoring. Um, each each way, you know, you, you're not going to be disappointed by the service uh, and, and the garments that you're going to get from it as well. Uh, Chris does have a few famous uh, clients to his name. One of them you saw in a picture earlier on there, uh, ex-Scotland captain uh, John Barkley, who's the VIP ambassador. There's the man there. Uh, you'll see him regularly uh, commentating on Scotland games on the telly. Uh, he's also the uh, VIP brand ambassador for White and Mackay as well. So if you're a big high roller and you want to buy some bigger stuff, um, once you, obviously you put all the McNeera you can, uh, then head over and speak to John uh, at White and Mackay. But you have to buy lots of McNeera first, though. I've got it in a contract <laughs> with him, it's stipulated. <laughs> One of his other famous clients, although perhaps um, somewhat less famous outside of whiskey circles, would be. Uh, Mickey Plummer, brand ambassador, Mac Miller. Listen, well, I'll, you know. Wait, I want to set a wee record straight here, guys. Every single one of my clients is an absolute rock star. Absolute rock star. Like you know, um, don't need to play rugby for Scotland just to be a, a rock star or a client for me, man. Everybody that walks in that door gets the same. I've, every single person gets the same service. Every single person gets the same advice. Every single person gets told if they're naff. You know, <laughs> so no, every single one is a rock star to me. Brilliant, absolutely fantastic takeaway, Chris. I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, so yeah, because so guys, um, our last McMurray in of the year will be next Friday, so make sure you tune in. Uh, we have the fantastic Anna Quigley from Glasgow Distillery, uh, up here in well. Glasgow. Where else would you put Glasgow Distillery? <laughs> um, so we've got her on to chat uh, about um, uh, about all things Glasgow whiskey, and, and you know, and we'll do some comparisons and stuff like that as well. Um, and like I said, uh, the 29th of uh, December will be our last show of the year. Uh, so make sure you buy your tasting pack for that, guys. Okay. Uh, so twenty nine ninety five off of uh, macmira.co.uk, and we'll be going through Motorhead, Vinterglud, Trish uh, oh. Look and uh, a single cask as well, which I can let you know is a, a smoky Oloroso, which is amazing, by the way. So don't miss out on that. Um, those, uh, so we're running very low on, we currently don't have any motorhead. Um, obviously, you know, Shush is limited to 1,500 bottles. Uh, Vinterglud is very, very in low numbers as well. And obviously the single cask stuff is from one single, from one single 30 litre cask. So, uh, you know, there's not a lot of that about. So it's quite unique. Uh, a taste it's probably the most unique tasting we've done uh, so far. So join myself and Gareth uh, on the 29th of December for our last one of the year. And um, I suppose we'll finish off with... Uh, thank you very much, Chris, for joining us. It's been an absolute pleasure, my friend. And I shall see you at some point next week. Uh, Rich, <laughs> thanks... <laughs> <laughs> fantastic yeah. fantastic rich <laughs> thanks a lot my man right sure. and uh, good night guys thanks for joining us slange school slange school <laughs>